The Scraps Book, Notes from a Colorful Life by Lois Ellert. Look at all those things to look at. Mm. Don't read this book unless you love books and art. When I was little, I read all the books on the library shelf, and I thought maybe someday I could make a book. This is me in my grandmother's garden. I was lucky. I grew up with parents who made things with their hands. My mom and dad, um, returning home from hunting for wild asparagus, Let's see, there's the asparagus. This is the home where I grew up. Mom loved to sew. She had colorful fabric scraps, buttons, lace, ribbons, and many scissors she shared with me. I use mom's pinking shears on my art projects. Dad had a basement workshop. He gave me wood scraps and taught me how to paint, saw, and pound nails. So I had wonderful art supplies and tools close at hand. And there's my watercolor brush. And there's dad's brush. <clears throat> In a small corner of our house, Dad set up a folding table for me. It was my spot, a place to work and dream. When I grew up and left home for art school, my table went with me. And here's, this is my spot now. There's my old folding table. After art school, I worked in an art studio by day and worked on book ideas at night. I created lots of art, though not for books right away, but I didn't worry. Everyone needs time to develop their dreams. An egg in the nest doesn't become a bird overnight. Where do book ideas come from anyway? I know I find ideas in the world around me. And she's got pictures. It's like this says, This fruit and vegetable face was my first cover idea for eating the alphabet. This tomato is on the cover of my first book, Growing Vegetable Soup. I even found them in my garden or while shopping at the fruit and vegetable store. Spring Garden Rainbow. In the fall before frost, plant these bulbs. Red emperor tulips, orange emperor tulips, yellow daffodils, Blue hyacinths, purple crocuses, green leaves. Plan for a bulb garden I planted for my mom. This is the first dummy book for planting a rainbow. And some orange flowers, tulip, zinnia, tiger lily, poppy. We may have to read that one again. When a squirrel slipped into my house, a book idea walked right up to me. There he goes, up the bricks on his claws. See the squirrel? He steals seeds and eats with his paws. Scraps of watercolor washes used for nuts to you up in the upper corner. See the squirrel right here? See his big tail? The lighting's kind of weird. That's better. Mm -hmm. On a trip to the aquarium, while I, where I watched colorful fish swim by, a book idea swam into my brain. I sketched and made notes before it floated away. So here's a list of fishy words for fish eyes. Jumping, beautiful, smiling, wet, wiggly, fan-tailed, skinny, darting, scaly, finny, splashy, flipping, gliding, short, slender, Fat, slinky, sleek, slippery, striped, spotted, wiggle, smooth, squishy, flat, chubby, slick, flutter, swimming, flashy, glitter. All those fishy words. 
aquarium art is based on fish eyes. Made paper fish, tie with the, oh, no, here we go. To the top here. Number one, you can make a fish aquarium. Two, use a discarded snap top container. That was two. Three, make paper fish, tie with yarn. Four, hang fish from top inside container. I keep my eyes open. An idea might be close by. And this is ice fishing decoys from my collection. Wow. Once when I visited my sister, her cat brushed my ankles as he escaped out the door. A new idea. Jingle, jingle. Christmas photo of my sister's cat, Bucky. First, I wrote the story from the cat's point of view. It went something like this. Mm. Doors left open, just a crack. Going out, might not be back. Found in a can. Food in a can is not too exciting when there are things I'd rather be biting. Then, come on, are you kidding me? Then, <laughs> sorry. Then I wrote the story from the cat owner's viewpoint. Here's how it changed. Oh, 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 doors left open, just a crack. My cat is out and he won't come back. His food in a can is tame and mild, so he's gone out for something wild. And there's a red-winged blackbird carved by my brother. After writing a story, I sketch the whole book, figuring out what to illustrate on each page. See, and this shows the, the bird and the different colors she's going to put in the different places. And look how the story goes. This is for feathers for lunch. And it shows the different parts of the story and the words on different pages. We'll have to read that one. Chirping and cheeping were sending a warning. Hmm. Back and forth, I worked on the pictures and words until together they tell the story. Whistle, whistle, check, check, check. There's a northern oriole. There's a lilac bush. My art technique, my art technique is called collage. I cut out scraps like pieces of a puzzle that I assemble and glue into place. And there's a sketch from Chicka Chicka Boom Boom. See, A told B, and B told C, I'll meet you at the top of the coconut tree. See? Ooh, look. And there's some more of her collage pictures. I'm messy when I work. There's a, a stencil letter. And a Ralph type face, this type face changed to this. Hmm. My waste baskets overflow. First idea for color 200 in an artist bookmaking class at the University of Wisconsin. Scraps lie strewn all over the studio and more scraps stick to the bottom of my shoes. But when ideas are flowing, I keep working. There's a Mexican child stick toy. There's milligros collected in Mexico. About the cuckoo. Bird puppet based on art from cuckoo. See, it's, a, it's a puppet that she's made. I often combine real objects with painted ones. Make a bird treat. Use a cookie cutter to cut a heart shape out of a slice of bread. Poke a hole in the top with a pencil or crayon. Brush an egg white onto the bread and press a bird seed onto top. Let it dry. Then thread a piece of ribbon or yarn through the hole and tie it to a tree. And there it is. Bird treat. Yeah. From Red Leaf, Yellow Leaf. Another one of her books. Now every night before I go to bed, I peek out the window and wave to my tree. 
When it snows, I hang up treats for the birds. I hung food on my tree for the birds to eat. It's a book dummy sketch. Oh, look at that owl. Mm -hmm. There's some beaded woodland Indian moccasins. Some other art from some of her other books. I use odd tools to create texture. I splash paint with a toothbrush or rub a crayon over my grater. Mm. Sometimes I photograph folk art from my collection to illustrate a story. See these folk dolls? There's a patchwork doll from the United States. There's fruit from Mexico. There's a doll purse from Bolivia. A beaded doll from Africa. Fruit from Mexico. There's some fiber butterfly from Peru. Huh. Lots of folk art. Folk art. That means like dolls from different countries. I use what's close at hand, just as I did when I was growing up. Mm, so here we have a toy compass, strawberry, evergreen branch, sketches for snowballs made in a hot summer, <laughs> bottle cap, foil candy wrappers, pine cone, toy fish, pencil, cinnamon stick, raisin, Mexican scrub brush, buttons, seashells, Corn, toy wheel. And there's a piece of art from her book, Snowballs. See that snowman? Did you see that? Here's her sketches that she made in the summer of snowballs, of snowmen. Yeah. Sometimes I go for a walk looking for good stuff. Crab tree, apples from a tree near my grocery store that I used as the cat's nose in Boo to You. There's black locust seed pods found in the park that I used as mouse tails in Boo to You. There's pumpkin seeds I used for the cat's teeth in Boo to You. There's some art from Boo to You. See the cat? Attach string here. Looks like it's a mask. Oh, here's a cat mask for you to make. Cut out centers of eyes. This mask is based on the cat in Boo to You. Attach string here and over there. Hmm. Day after day I work until the art looks just right to me. See all these different pictures of flowers. You might ask, why did I choose to be an artist? You can make a flower necklace with paper and a string. Art from Waiting for Wings. Photograph of flowers from a botanical garden used as reference for art in Waiting for Wings. I think maybe it's the other way around. Art chose me. Look at all those caterpillars eating that leaf. And the book is called Ten Little Caterpillars. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Nine, ten, ten little caterpillars. And there she is, the author. <laughs> if you feel that way too, I hope you find a spot to work and begin. There's a photograph, another reference photo for her to create this picture of this chicken. I wish you a colorful life. Look at all those pretty flowers and the butterflies. And that's it. Hmm. Art is part of heart. Get that? Art is part of heart. And there's all of her, well, a bunch anyways, I don't know, maybe it isn't all, of her book covers. See how she has such a unique style. There's Waiting for Wings that she talked a lot about. There's Nuts to You, the one with the squirrel. Ten Little Caterpillars. Yeah. Fish Eyes. 
Chicka chicka boom boom. She talked about a lot of those books, didn't she? Planting a Rainbow. She talked about that one. We may have to read more of hers, huh? There's more pictures of various things. So many things. It's so busy. Lots of things. More here. Mm. That's it.